Hey everyone, in this video, I'm going to cover the data feeds feature within Sellachamp. Using data feeds, you're able, to, you're able to connect your supplier's catalog, both to import new products, as well as to import inventory and price updates. Sellachamp allows you to create multiple data feeds to connect to multiple suppliers. They can be configured to run multiple times in a day. And you can also set up advanced properties, such as which columns to import, which columns to ignore, you can also add your rules for price markups uh, based on weight as well as price tiers. You can add in marketplace fees, shipping fees, and so forth. There's also advanced rules within the feeds that you can use to ignore certain rows based on certain column values and so forth. This feature allows you to run a wholesale dropshipping business smoothly and efficiently. All right, so without further ado, let's jump right into it. Okay, so to create a data feed, log into Sellachamp, go into settings, click on setting channels, scroll down and then click on data feeds. You can then add a new data feed using the add data feed account button. Within here, give it the name. Uh, typically, a good idea is to give it the name of your supplier, for example, CWR. Um, you can then decide what sort of feed this is. Is, it, is this a feed that will import new products or it, is this a feed that will update your existing products with the new quantities and pricing and so forth. Okay. You can also pick an existing sup uh, su supplier template. So instead of trying to fill it out, uh, fill out all the column mappings and all of that yourself, you can pick from an existing supplier that we've already set up within Sellachamp. So these are already all the suppliers that we've already set up and you can go ahead and pick one if your supplier is already here. If it's not here, then you will need to go ahead and manually uh, specify the column mappings and so forth, which I'm going to go into shortly. So I went ahead and picked CWR. You can then go ahead and give it the FTP feed URL where the feed is located. So you will get this information for your, from your supplier. For instance, ftp.cwr.com, just as an example. You would then give it the FTP username and password. Again, these values would be something that the supplier will give you, right? And then you type in where this feed is located. So for instance, I can type in Sellachamp and you know temp at one, two, three. And then you can type in where this feed is located within the FTP folder. So example files, okay, items.csv. All right. You can then specify the type of file that this is. If it's a CSV file or, or a TXT file, you can just keep it file-based. Um, or if it's different, then you can go ahead and select the type of uh, comma delimiter this file uses, for example, comma or tab and so forth, okay? You can then decide when do you wanna run this feed, uh, only if the file has changed since the last run, meaning that the last time Sellachamp ran this feed, have there been updates to this file since then? If so, you want to run the feed, otherwise you want to skip it. Or you can say, you know what, I always want to run it regardless of whether or not the file has changed. Um, you want to go with option one in the majority of the cases. This decides, this you can use to run, decide how often you want to run the feed. Every 30 minutes, one hour, two hours, and so forth. You can also run every 15 minutes, but there is an additional fee for that. If you need to run, your feeds every 15 minutes, get in touch with us and we can cover that as well. Um, you can then decide certain SKUs that you might want to skip. So there might be certain SKUs that you do not want to sync from the supplier uh, or you do not want to import. You can upload a file to skip those SKUs. Um, this setting allows you to set up if the SKU is missing in the file, what do you want to do? Just ignore it, end the listing or zero the listing on the marketplace. You can also type in a tag so if you do it give it a tag then the products that we import from the feed we will tag it uh, we will give it that tag so this is helpful when you have multiple suppliers connected and you want to easily look at the items from a certain supplier for instance i will give this the tag cwr and now i can easily search for all products containing the tag cwr so that i can keep my product separate across separate suppliers this is where you can actually type in um, your profit percentages and so forth um, so that you to ensure that when, the, when you sell the product you're actually making making profit on it if you're in Europe you can go ahead and put in a, a VAT percentage otherwise you can just ignore it um, 
You can apply the profit percentage either as a markup or a margin. There are separate videos that actually explain the difference between the two. So watch that video for a detailed explanation on what is the difference to apply profit as a markup versus a margin. You can then also set up your pricing based on a flat structure where you can just say, you know what, I want to make a 20% profit on all my products, right? That would basically be a flat structure. And then you would give it a sell on add on amount. For instance, I want to make a 20% profit. And then you know what, add $8 on top of that because that's my shipping fee, right? Um, this is for your retail price. You can also set your min and max prices. So you can say, you know what, yes, by default, I want to make a 20% profit, but I can go as low as 10% profit. So your min price would be 10% and then your min add on would still be $8. And maximum, you know what, I really don't want to make more than 50% profit because I don't want my price to be too high. So I'm going to put 50. And for my add-on, let me put $10. The reason you want to set these up is that now that you have your 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 um, your sell profit percentages, which is default 20%, and your min and max, you can actually turn on repricers. So if you're selling these items on Walmart, eBay, Amazon, you can turn on SellerChamp's repricer, and SellerChamp will dynamically reprice your items to make you to give you more sales, ensuring that you never go below your min pro, min min price and never go above your max price. So these percentages help you control that. SellerChamp also has the option to actually fetch the marketplace fee for Amazon and, and automatically apply it to your product. This only works for Amazon right now. Um, in the future, we do have plans to make it work for other marketplaces such as Walmart. Um, so if you wanna apply, if you want us to actually go fetch the actual marketplace fee, you can go and click yes. Otherwise you can keep that as no. Um, you can then also skip certain products. So you can say, you know what, if a product has less than three quantities, I don't want to take a risk. I don't want to sell it and it will be ignored. You can also give it, give you the, you can also give it a skew prefix and a skew suffix. So you can say, you know what, all the products that you import from CWR, I want you to apply a CWR dash in front of those, in front of those products. Okay, that'll, 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 that's another way of ensuring that different products have different prefixes, different products from different suppliers have different prefixes. Suffix works the same way. All right, you, you want to keep this item setting as yes, because we'll actually read your SKUs from the file that you'll upload. You can also say, you know what, any SKU that starts with a certain prefix can be ignored. Header row index, this is where in the file do the product start. So by default, it should be zero, but sometimes a lot of suppliers will have some text on the top so if that's the case, then you want to change this to where the products are actually starting, where the header is located. You can also give it an inventory location. So any products that we import, we will set that as a location for that, for those products. Okay. You can give it, a lot of suppliers will not have a quantity uh, in their feeds. If that's the case, you can give it a default quantity, let's say five. Same thing, you can give it a handling time. If you're selling on Amazon, you can type in the shipping template that you want to use on Amazon. You can also configure a fulfillment service. This comes handy when um, your supplier is also your drop shipper. So when you make the sale, your supplier has the ability to accept that order from SellerChamp automatically and fulfill it for you. So if that's the case, then you would basically set that up here, where you would specify the name of the fulfillment service that you've set up inside SellerChamp that you want to use for this specific, um, you know, for the specific feed. You can also set up priority. So if you have multiple feeds from the same supplier, you can use priorities to dictate which feed should run first and then and, and so forth. For instance, you might want to make sure that you run the import feed for the new feed first to import all your products and then run the update feeds to update the price, the quantity and so forth. So priority can be used for that. Notifications, this is if something goes wrong, where should we email you? If you're not able to run the feed, if the if you're not able to connect to the supplier's FTP server, what have you, we'll, we'll send you a notification at this email address. You can also turn on test mode. So this will basically make sure that, let you test and make sure that we're importing the products correctly, we're making the update products correctly and so forth without pushing anything to the marketplaces, okay? Finally, now we get into column mappings. So this is where you map the file, the CSV file that the, cust that the supplier gives you to the column mappings inside SellerChamp. So for instance, if the first column is the SKU, you would put a zero. 
for that because uh, the columns number starts start at zero and go and go from there instead of starting at one they start at zero so in this case for CWR you know the the zero column which is the first column is the SKU then the third column is the quantity the 14 column number 14 is the title so we've already populated all of this column mappings for you because we picked CWR as a template since that's already set inside Sellachamp. If you were going with a brand new supplier for which we did not have the mappings, then you would go ahead and type all of this in yourself. This does get a little bit daunting. And so if you need help, we'll be more than happy to help you out. In fact, we recommend that when you're setting up a feed uh, that's not in the system, just send us an email uh, or send us a chat message and we will help you, um, you know, jump on a call with you and set that feed up together, test it out, make sure it's working well, make sure the prices are correct, you're making a profit and so forth. Okay, so you don't run into any scenarios where something is not set up correctly or the price is not being imported correctly and so forth. You wanna avoid all of that because those kinds of scenarios is where you might you know, end up losing money, which is not something you, know, you want. So you set up all your columns here um, and there is all kinds of options for your columns, okay? Override margins that you can use, they can read from the feed. Um, map price, so you know you can specify your map price as well. There might be multiple columns for map price, that's why there's two of them here. Item location, weight, length, dimensions. Um, any, any sort of product data you can think of is probably in here, okay? If you do find a product data that's in your supplier that we're not importing, just let us know and we can get that added, all right? So this is where you set up all of that, okay? And then finally, we have some advanced rules as well, where you can say that, hey, you know what? If column 10 contains the value overweight, then skip the row. I don't wanna, I don't wanna, import, I don't wanna sell overweight items, okay? And you can add multiple rules. So you can hit the plus button and add another rule and so forth. You can also say, uh, you know, if um, is, if the value is, and then make it blank. So if certain value is blank, skip the row. Or you can say, you know what, I don't wanna skip it, let's apply a tag. And then you can apply a tag, for example, overweight. Okay. So there's some advanced options here where you can actually say, if this, if column value X contains, if column value contains this, then do this, okay. The other thing I wanna cover is, in addition to FTP, you can also set up an HTTP HTTP feed. So the reason, the, the, the difference is that with HTTP feeds, there is no FTP URL. Uh, that is just the, the address where the file is located. For example, you know, S3, maybe the file is located on Amazon, right? So you just type in the URL. Um, most of the time that URL is public, so you don't need a username and password. There are cases where the HTTP site actually requires a username and password. So if that's, if that's your scenario, then go ahead and put in the username and password as well. And you would not need FTP files path here, you just need the URL. So we do support HTTP feeds as well. And finally, we also support API driven FTP feeds. Um, but for APIs, if we already support that supplier's API feed, um, then we can easily set it up. There is an extra charge for that. Um, but we can, we can go ahead and take care of that. And if it's a supply that we don't currently support, so it needs a brand new API implementation, then get in touch with us. We will have to look at their documentation and see how much work is involved in setting up that API um, and if we can do it. If we can, the fee starts from $1,000 and goes up, depending upon the complexity of the API. Uh, but if it's a supplier that we already support an API connection with, then the setup fee is just $199, okay? So those are the different options. FTP, HTTP, FTP is the most common. HTTP, uh, which is also not that common, but pretty easy to configure out of the box, and then the API option, all right? Now, once you set up this feed, you go and click Save Changes or Add Account. Now you have the feed ready. Now what you do is you connect this feed to one of your selling channels. So for instance, let's say my CWR products, I wanna sell them on Amazon. So what I would do is um, I would create a new connection, add new connection from the CWR feed, okay, to Amazon. All right, because let's say that's where I wanna sell it. 
keep everything else blank because for feeds, all of the data is already specified inside the feed. So we don't need to specify all of this and then click create. All right. And then you run sync now. Okay. And that's going to run the feed and take all of the feed products and import them into the Amazon account. And the import process works exactly as when you're importing from one channel to another. All of the products will be imported. We will automatically fetch data that's not in the feed. For instance, the prices at which the product is currently selling, the UPC code if it's missing, product pictures, description, item specifics, any data that's not being provided by the supplier, we will try and automatically fetch for you. And then we will also set your selling price based on the rules that you have provided inside the feed, you know, the profit markup percentage and so forth. All right. Once those products are imported, you can then go ahead and list them on your selling channel. So that covers how to take data from a supplier and import it so that you can list it on your selling channel. The other part of the equation is to, is to run the updates which is, you know, you've got the products already active, already listed on your selling channel, and now you just need to connect to the supplier's inventory price update so that uh, you, you are reading the latest in-stock quantity that they have, and you're sending that information from SellerChamp to your selling channels. That works the exact same way. You create a new feed, and in this case, the feed action, you would set that to update instead of new, you create an update, CWR updates feed, okay, and you set the feed action to update. Specify only the columns that you need to import during the update. Typically, this is only the SKU, quantity, and maybe price if you want to, re if you want to read the latest price from the supplier. Otherwise, just SKU and quantity. Configure how often you need to run this feed. That depends on how often your supplier updates the file and you're good to go. Well, I hope that was helpful. And now you know how you can set up data feeds within SellerChamp so you can run a wholesale dropshipping business smoothly, efficiently, and without the stress of running out of uh, quantities, selling out of sold products, and so forth. Again, if you need any help, don't hesitate to contact us, send us a chat message, or schedule a help session. If you like this video, please hit the like button, subscribe to our channel to keep up to date with the latest content. Thanks and have an amazing day.